again on behalf of the UK Alumni Career Services and the UK Alumni Association, we are thrilled that you've joined us for our second annual Career Management Week, Week of Programming. Lots of exciting programs coming your way. I'm Caroline Francis, Director of UK Alumni Career Services, joined by our team here, um, Lindsay Cottle, Christy Kaufman, um, Stacey Gish. We are delighted to have those folks on our team helping behind the scenes, as well as our panel that you'll hear from shortly. Um, please use the chat box if you have questions. Uh, we'll address those along the way. Also, at the end, we're going to have some awesome panelists share their pivot story and give some advice and motivation for making a pivot. And we'll allow you to have a chance to ask them some questions as well. This year marks the 20th anniversary of UK Alumni Career Services. We were one of the first schools to offer designated alumni career programming for our alumni. And it's been a pleasure to get to know so many of you through the years and help you progress in your careers. Often, unfortunately, we just see you when you're in career crisis. That's why for National Career Development Month, we have put together a week of programming to help people in different stages of their careers to help you be proactive in career management. So enjoy the week. A few things to look forward to in 2023, we're going to begin annual career wellness checkups. So watch your email for annual career wellness checkups. Also, we're going to have a women's career programming, our women's career um, four week series backed by popular demand. So keep an eye um, on your email. More information will come out after the beginning of the year. Let's begin and talk a little bit how to make that pivot. These are some of the reasons that we see people wanting to make a career change or a career pivot. And some of these may resonate with you. Maybe you want a salary increase that have perhaps peaked out where you currently are. Maybe you're no longer passionate about your career. We're all going to be living longer, working longer. And what we studied in college when we were 18 to 22 years old, typically, you know, we might have a totally different interest or passion um, than when we were younger. Perhaps you're bored. Um, maybe just are in a job that's too stressful. And I think during COVID, um, many people had a chance to reevaluate their careers and what was most important to them. Maybe you want flexibility. You know, often companies are open, are offering hybrid and remote options right now. That might be something you want. Better life work balance. Um, maybe your industry has uh, plummeted and you realize you need to make a change. Also, encore careers. Uh, it's exciting to work with so many alumni, uh, 50 plus, that are looking to do something totally different. They've had one or two exciting careers, and now they want to do something totally different. Next. These are some questions to think about when you're looking at, is it time to make a a career change, just some additional things to really take into consideration. Um, are you still motivated to go to work? Um, do you still enjoy using your current skill set? Um, can you find anything about your current job that you enjoy doing? Um, is it negatively impacting your health? And in that case, it's, it's definitely time to take a closer look at your career journey. Um, as I mentioned earlier, maybe you're in a field where there's a declining um, growth um, or not a lot of advancement opportunities where you are. And often in career counseling, I hear clients say, oh my gosh, I never imagined I'd be in this career for as long as I have been. It's been 20 years and I, I really need to move on if I'm ever going to. Um, maybe you're not getting to use your preferred skills or your Clifton strengths. Uh, often people just want to learn something new and totally different. And then others over time, as we grow as people and 
of life changes, our interest and our passions change as well. Let's talk a little bit about the reality of evaluating your current job satisfaction. Um, no job is going to be perfect every day, um, but if you're looking to make a pivot, you know, it could potentially um, take, it's going to take some work. There can be some risk and maybe some self-sacrifice to make that change. Sometimes we have to go backwards uh, before we would go forward, meaning maybe we'll have to take a little bit less pay or status or perks uh, before we can progress along our new journey and our new career path. So think about, am I willing to invest? Uh, do you have family or friends that are going to be there to support you uh, during this transition? Um, also, I like to encourage clients to keep a journal as they're potentially leading to a career change. Um, keep a journal about what specifically, pinpoint what specifically is it that you're unhappy with in your current um, job, company, field. Try to get as specific as possible on that. Also, what pieces of your current job do you really like? or jobs in the past? What have you really enjoyed? Have there been some themes and patterns? What would you like more of? What would you like less of? Hopefully you have a pen and paper handy and are um, taking a look at some notes today or taking some notes today during the presentation. Next. So do you need a career change or a job change? We always encourage clients to make a couple of job changes before they would make a major career change. Sometimes the change of culture, company, um, team is all you need to be happy and satisfied again or a new challenge. And again, uh, try to get as specific as possible about what you're, you're not caring for. If you have the 70-30 rule, I think you're doing pretty good. If 70% of the time you really are happy with your career and your job or your company, um, I think that's a pretty good um, statistic to go for. Again, there's no perfect day. Really think about what it's going to take to make you happy in your next job. This is time well spent and will help make the path a little bit clearer in the future um, if you can just put, the, put down the pros and cons. Next, we encourage you to look at your VIPs, your values, interests, personality, and skills. Um, this is something we help clients with in career counseling. We have values exercises, personality assessments, skills, such as a strong interest inventory that compares your interest to people in 120 careers. Um, also, Clifton Strengths. These are just a few of the things that will help you get a little more focus and direction on where your strengths lie, what might be a better fit for you. And again, that's something we can help you with in alumni career counseling. Um, active and life members of the Alumni Association are eligible for two sessions a year with a certified career counselor and anyone can join the alumni association and take advantage of that member benefit next for number three tip number three we're going to look at transferable skills think about what skills you really like using uh, which ones you want to develop further and then moving on to number three, begin a brainstorming list. When do you find that you're in the flow? What do other people come to you for? Maybe have a, um, a dinner party or go out for coffee with, with some of your closest friends and help let them help you brainstorm. Uh, what careers could you see me doing? Uh, with what you know about me being one of my good friends, what careers? Could you see me doing really well in? Keep a brainstorming list going. Things will come at odd times, a stoplight right before you go to bed. We all have lots of jobs and careers in us, which is really exciting, especially folks that are 
uh, coming upon Encore Careers. Um, it's really exciting to be able to go look at that brainstorming list and think about pivoting to one of those areas. Things you put on your brainstorming list might only be things you would want to do part time uh, or contract or seasonal or gig work, but get that brainstorming list going as part of the process. Next, explore and dabble. And what we mean by that is take baby steps, um, do something to see if um, what you're leaning toward is really what you thought it was going to be. Take some classes do volunteer work, conduct some informational interviews, read job descriptions. These are all ways to explore and dabble and take baby steps when it comes to really putting the time in to seeing if this is something you want to do. Next, build your resume. You can do this all while you're still working but slowly take a class. There are a lot of online classes that you can take now for free or for very little money. Take class, get us a certification that maybe you could be doing on the side so that you can build your resume. Again, volunteering, uh, these are all good things to do to build your resume to make a potential transition. That's also where Functional or transferable skills can come in handy um, in a functional resume, which is a skills-based resume. And this is really helpful when you're totally changing careers. For instance, we get a teacher, a lot of teachers or nurses or even lawyers that have done it for many years, but they want something totally different. But if they have a 20-year work history in one industry, an employer may not take them seriously. So by taking classes or doing volunteer work or getting involved, involved in professional associations of the field that you want to go into, um, you're going to have a better chance of being taken seriously. And then switching from a chronological to a functional resume that focuses on the skills that would be used in the new or target industry would be the next thing to do. Next, rebranding. This would start with tweaking your LinkedIn profile and making it look more like the field you want to go into. Getting out amongst people that are in the field or the career you want to be in. All good ways to help rebrand. Talking to your friends, sharing your excitement about what you want to do next and finding people that you can um, network with that are in the field that you're targeting all part of the rebranding process. Anytime someone's making a major career shift or transition, your network can really be instrumental in opening doors for you. If someone in your network can speak on your behalf, you'll more likely get called for an interview especially if an employer would be taking a chance on someone making a pivot. But if you have a colleague inside a company that you wanna work for that can push your resume forward or go to people in charge and say some good things about you and your transferable skills and what you could bring to the company, um, that is a huge strategy for making a pivot or a transition. Now being able to convince a hiring committee. Once you get to the interview, being able to convince the hiring committee is where you have to really be able to sell yourself. Clients have told us this was um, something they weren't quite expecting, that they had to really feel like they put the sell on in the interview and have a good story on their transition. Um, sure, it helps being likable and having um, positive energy, um, but being able to sell yourself in that interview on uh, why you're making the transition, what you have done to prepare for that transition, and showing how you have invested in yourself as a professional are also excellent things that will help get you an offer. These are some of the pitfalls, some classic pitfalls we see of switchers. 
many fail to invest the time and energy in doing the self-assessment, you know, the soul searching, being able to share values, interests, personality, and skills to get that direction early on. Some quit their jobs without a transition plan. You are always going to be more marketable when you're working, even if it's in a totally different, different field. So don't everyone go out and quit your day job um, tomorrow. Please have a transition plan in place. Also, sometimes people chase hot jobs. Um, they drop, drop, drop to a job that they feel is going to be uh, the hot job uh, of the year only to get there and realize, oh, this wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Uh, I really don't care for this. It's not a good fit. Relying on traditional job search advice also is not the best strategy and making a pivot. You're really going to need to rely on your network to help you make that transition. Sometimes people think if I get a certification or degree, then I'm automatically going to be able to make that change to the new field. Sure, that's going to help, but also having some volunteer experience or some temporary work or side work uh, will also help pave the way. Again, don't overlook your network, um, getting involved in professional associations, doing volunteer work, all good things to make the uh, transition. And again, there will be some roadblocks along the way. You may have to take a backward step before going forward, but it's so exciting when we see clients make pivots and really land in new fields that they're much happier in and then quickly progress and find success in those fields. We're gonna, in just a couple of minutes, bring up our panel to share some of these successful pivots. But the main thing I want you to do is to just take baby steps to get started. A book I highly recommend to clients, uh, one of the best books I've read on career pivots is called Switchers by Don Graham. Uh, excellent book, um, highly recommend that for more uh, help on making a career pivot. Alumni Career Services um, are here to help you with job search, career transitions and pivots. We look forward to working with you, our team of certified career counselors. I'm delighted to help you keep that resource in mind as well. Now we would like for our panelists um, to show their lovely faces. Super excited to have an awesome panel today to share their pivot story with you firsthand. Great turnout for today's work workshop. If you could share with us a few uh, points that you're going to take away from the first part of today's presentation in the chat box, you can be doing that. I'll begin with introducing our panelists. First, we're going to have Gwen Nelson Everly to share her pivot story, and she's had a couple. <laughs> Gwen is well known for her savvy business skills, leadership, philanthropy, and Southern Fair. After careers in mortgage banking, engineering, and education, she followed her passion of catering delicious food by starting a barbecue truck business. With its success and ever-increasing demand for their barbecue and other homemade specialties, she and her husband, Wren, opened J. Render Southern Table and Bar in 2016. And I have to say, Gwen, I really do love that cornbread salad and your <laughs> banana pudding. They are unbelievably <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Adding to the restaurant's casual upscale dining experience, tasty food, and robust catering services, they now um, have a wonderful new event space called J. Render Speak Easy. Thursday night, we will be having a networking event there as part of our career management week. That our space is limited for that. If you would like to join us, please go online and register as soon as possible. 
we do expect that to be a sellout event in the new space. So that will be a lovely networking event. Gwen's an ambitious business owner and has positioned her speakeasy as a unique and full service event space. Gwen is also the proud mother to Lauren, and she's a GG to Jack and Nora, <laughs> and a friend and mentor to many. Gwen, let's hear your pivot story. Okay, I am so happy to share it. Um, as I was watching your presentation, um, I wished I knew you back when I was doing all my pivoting. Um, and honestly, I probably am not done. Um, at some point, I will pivot away from the restaurant, um, I think. But I have had four careers. Um, I started in mortgage banking, and I worked in mortgage banking for um, 11, 10, 11 years. Um, I had not um, gotten my education yet, so I had not gone to UK. I really wanted to um, have that experience, but I did it later in life. I had um, my daughter was about nine or 10 when I graduated from UK with my engineering degree. So when I look at that pivot, um, that was uh, something that I did to improve myself, um, my situation to make better money. I could have pivoted within the mortgage industry and changed jobs rather, um, but that was not something that I really wanted to do long term. I wanted to go back to UK. I wanted to get my degree and engineering ended up being what I did. I loved the, um, you know, the challenge of it, uh, being able to uh, master that. Um, so I did go part time while I was still uh, working in the mortgage industry. So I didn't quit, uh, you know, the mortgage banking job until I went full time to UK to finish my degree. So um, then I worked at Lexmark um, for about 10 years. And um, that change was not one that I wanted to make or chose, but I was laid off. Um, I was digital design, so there was not a lot of digital design jobs. And to be honest, I was not particularly enthralled with the position. It was a little ho-hum um, and not very exciting. So rather than seek out another engineering job, I went back and um, I got my master's uh, in education from Georgetown, I know didn't go to UK, but um, so I went and taught high school math for three years. So that would be my next pivot, completely different from anything and everything. And I, I did it for three years, but it just was not something that I wanted to do long-term. At this point, you know, we started dreaming up the next uh, act, I guess. And my husband and I had cooked and he had smoked meats and we thought we had really good food. And so on our back patio, we dreamed up the concept of J renders and we bought a food truck. And, you know, I did the food truck while I was teaching um, and let the food truck get off the ground and start going in the catering business build before I res, you know, did my, um, turned in my notice for that. So, um, so now, you know, we've had J renders for uh, about 10 years. It's time for another pivot, right? Um, but uh, it's going really well. We started with the food truck and the catering. We then opened the brick and mortar in 2016. And now here in 2022, we have opened the new space adjacent to the restaurant. Um, it's been very exciting and, you know, I'm not done yet with, with Jay Renders, but, you know, there's always uh, a chance that I'll do something different. Gwen, thank you for sharing your inspiring story of not one, but a few different pivots <laughs> and normalizing that, you know, that's going to be the wave of the future. We're all going to have lots of jobs and careers and you've, you've done it beautifully. And I know it's been a lot of hard work. So thank you for sharing. Um, we'll go to our next panelist, but if you have questions for any of our panelists as we go through, please add those in the chat box, and we'll come back to those at the end. Next is Lindsay Cottle. And Lindsay, Hi. Lindsay, welcome today. 
She attended Eastern Kentucky University where she received a Bachelor of Arts in Communication Studies followed by a Master's of Arts in Teaching and Rank One Certification. Uh, Lindsay spent 12 years as an educator with Madison Southern High School in Berea, Kentucky, where she spent most of her time teaching language arts and social studies. She was also very involved in her career as a teacher and won some pretty impressive awards, uh, a Teacher Innovation a Grant, uh, a Teacher Who Made a Difference Award that was from the University of Kentucky in 2018. But after the pandemic, she did a reset like many people have done and she felt it was time to step out of the classroom for a little while. So in June of this year, she began a career at the University of Kentucky Alumni Association as a program coordinator and diversity liaison. Lindsay, why don't you tell us a little more about your journey since it's been so recent? Yes. So when I graduated college, it was unfortunately in 2008, the beginning of uh, the recession, and there weren't very many jobs out there. I was I was dead set on having a, a career in sales. And so I got a job with New York Life, selling life insurance right out of college. And I stuck with it for about four months, long enough to get my license to sell insurance. Um, my only sale was to my dad and he bought, he bought a policy. And then I decided, you know, I'm, I'm not making any money. I'm out of college. I need to, you know, be out on my own. It was the year before my wedding. So I, I needed to make some money to plan a wedding. And I started looking for jobs. And in 2008, there weren't many jobs out there, but I was able to find some part-time positions. So I, I worked at a real estate office um, in an administrative assistant position part-time. And I worked at PNC Bank as a bank teller part-time. And then at David's Bridal selling wedding dresses part-time. So I was working about six to seven days a week, and but I was making money. That, that was the goal at the time. Um, but after getting married that following year in 2009, I, I decided to make you know some goals for myself. I knew that I wanted to have a family. I wanted to grow our family. I wanted to buy a house. And so I knew that I needed a job or a career that was long-term, that would be a salary position and would have benefits. So I had heard of a friend who went back to school, got her master's in education, and I decided to follow suit. And I started teaching in fall of 2010, and I loved it. Um, it I loved school. Um, I would stay in school as a student forever and ever if I could. I'm still in school. and. I, I love teaching, but the classroom was a difficult place for me. Um, I was probably um, too emotionally attached sometimes and took a lot of things home with me. And so I knew that I probably could not spend a 30 year career in the classroom. So about 2015, I decided to go back to school and get my uh, doctor in educational leadership because I thought that that would open doors for me outside of the classroom. And so after spending three years getting those classes out of the way, I realized um, that it was not opening doors and that it was not gonna open doors for me at the time. And uh, in education, if there's anybody on this, on this Zoom call in education, you probably know um, that when you're in education, and you want to uh, be an administrator, you're kind of um, expected to pay your dues as a principal. And I didn't wanna be a principal. I was more interested in like the curriculum development side, um, but there were no open doors for me. So I decided to start looking um, for, for other jobs. I um, looked at the Department of Education um, in Frankfurt, didn't really um, see a lot there. But I just kept my eye open for about six years. Um, I just kept an eye on different uh, positions out there. I wasn't in any hurry. I think um, if I had any advice, it's just don't get in a hurry. Um, make sure that you find something that is a good fit for you. And don't take on anything that, um, you know, is out of, out of the norm. 
I knew what my strengths were and I knew that I wanted um, that if I did switch careers, that I wanted something that was exciting and something that I enjoyed, something that was, um, I don't know, like something that I wanted to get out of bed for every day. And talking about your um, network, I um, just happened to be on social media one day and one of my friends from college was posting pictures from her job and I messaged her. I said, where, where do you work? Because it looks like fun. And she said, I work at the University of Kentucky Alumni Association and we're hiring. And, and that's kind of what led me to apply for this position in alumni engagement and diversity coordinator. And I absolutely love it. It was very, very hard. Um, it took me several months at the end of the school year to, um, you know, kind of go back and forth with the pros and cons of switching careers. And I decided to go for it because it was, it was something that finally um, kind of lit my fuse and got me excited. And it's a good, it's a good switch for me. And I enjoy going to work every day. And I told someone um, during our busy time when we had a lot of homecoming events happening that it didn't feel like work. It felt like I was getting to do um, something fun and exciting. And yeah, so that's, that's where my education career led me. And here I am now. Thank you for sharing, Lindsay, and welcome aboard. It's been great working with you. Thank Our you. next panelist is Mark Johnson. He was born and raised in Lexington, Kentucky and spent a number of his formative years growing up in the city's historic east side. He's currently president of Art Inc. Kentucky, which is a nonprofit business and marketing incubator serving Kentucky artists and operates through community ventures. Um, Mark has a Bachelor of Science in Math and a minor in Economics from the University of Kentucky. Um, his first career was in banking. He spent many rewarding years in banking, um, he was one of the youngest vice presidents at his bank, um, had a desire to be of service to his hometown of Lexington and the state of Kentucky, and he's continued to do that through his work with nonprofit and micro business um, development. Um, he went on to the cabinet for economic development, and while there, he worked with the Kentucky Arts Council to provide business classes targeted at and created especially for artists. After spending 10 years in state government, he returned to community ventures. Um, Mark's art passion that he does on the side and has done professionally as well are glass making and creative photography. And wow, I'm so impressed. Mark has shown his work in New York at one of the largest art shows, Art Expo, and that was in 2016. And as a result of that event, he was offered a once in a lifetime opportunity to show his work at the Louvre in Paris. And then he also had a chance to share his work um, in Florence, Italy. So that's pretty impressive, Mark. Uh, please share a little bit about your transition, your pivot uh, through your career. Super excited to hear from you today. Okay, we'll have you go off mute. All right, can you all hear me okay? Okay, well, uh, first off, I wanna uh, thank you all for having me here. Um, in preparing for this, I was able to kind of reflect back on my career and uh, I've had some really amazing opportunities um, that have been presented to me. So it, 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 it enabled me to kind of look back and reflect on uh, those opportunities and those people that really kind of um, offered me uh, a hand up when I, uh, when I was kind of going through, as I was progressing through my, through my career path. So that's a uh, very thankful for that. Um, so yeah, uh, as you heard, I, uh, I graduated from UK. Um, my father was a mathematics professor uh, at Kentucky State University. And my mother was a first grade teacher uh, at um, Cardinal Valley here in Lexington. So I think it was kind of always planned that I was going to end up in the, in the teaching field. And 
until I got to college, that was kind of the plan for my for myself. Uh, but as I started researching and kind of figuring out what careers I wanted to get into, uh, I stumbled upon uh, banking. I had a, a, a gentleman that uh, was a friend of our family. Uh, he was a banker. Uh, and as I just got to talking to him more, uh, I decided that I wanted to, to get into the banking, the banking industry, much to the chagrin of, of my, my father, especially. I think he kind of wanted me to um, follow along in his footsteps. But uh, banking really interested me. Uh, it was back in the day of, you know, high finance and the stock market and Wall Street and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I kind of used that as a motivating factor to get into the industry. Um, I started out on the teller line, uh, pretty much like, like almost everyone that gets into banking, uh, but that gave, gave me a really good introduction. In and um, get a good introduction into, uh, into finance. Um, from there, uh, I worked my way up. Uh, as I said, got into um, did a little bit of mortgage lending and got into uh, commercial lending towards the end of my uh, end of my banking career. And that's the part that I really enjoy. Uh, I got to work with entrepreneurs uh, that had great business ideas. Uh, sometimes we were able to fund them and, and sometimes we, we were not able to fund them. And as I progressed uh, towards that part, um, I really started trying to figure out how can I help those individuals that we were not able to fund uh, at the bank, but they had really viable and really great uh, opportunities, but they, we weren't able to fund them for whatever reason. So that's when I started looking into uh, other programs that we could refer our clients to, the ones that we were not able to fund. They may have a great business plan, but for one reason or another, we just couldn't fund them at the bank. So that's when I came across Community Ventures. Um, so based on that, uh, and based on the work that, that Community Ventures did, um, I decided to, to leave banking. Um, I think at that point I had worked for, for two different banks, two or three different banks. I interviewed, you know, let me put it this way. I interviewed for two or three different banks and I had ended up working for five or six because of name changes and mergers and, and things of that nature. So uh, that's about the time I decided to get out of banking. Um, and then I got, uh, was fortunate enough to become affiliated with uh, community ventures. So I was still able to uh, work with uh, business entrepreneurs, help them with their business planning, and we were still able to provide them with financing, which was the part that really um, um, kind of got me motivated and excited. And I did that. I left the banking career after about 10 years, and then I was fortunate to come to Community Ventures, community ventures and work there uh, for about uh, four additional years. Uh, from there, uh, I was um, uh, asked to come work for the uh, Lexington Area Small Business Development Center to help them, uh, another nonprofit organization actually uh, through the University of Kentucky, as a matter of fact. And we work with entrepreneurs to help them build their business plan and again, help them to try to find financing. So uh, I was there, became the assistant director there, stayed there for a number of years. Uh, from that location, I was requested to come to work for the Economic Development Cabinet uh, in their small business services division. They were starting a brand new loan program and they asked me to come and head that program up. And I stayed at the uh, cabinet uh, for about 10 years. Throughout that period of time, I was uh, starting uh, my own I, my own interest in um, small business. My, my very first business was a um, uh, an antiques business. Started literally online uh, via eBay, and then uh, I had about 10 different booths in peddlers malls and antique malls across the across the state. Absolutely loved it. I uh, started gravitating towards jewelry and uh, glass. So if you're familiar with Fenton glass and Blinko, uh, Northwestern, Moser glass, I started gravitating towards that. Um, and one morning I just woke up and said, you know, I don't want to sell anybody else's glass work anymore. I want to learn how to make my own glass. And from there, that's where I took classes and uh, watched a lot of YouTube videos and, and learned how to make glass uh, myself. And that's kind of what launched me on my own personal art career. Um, throughout that period of time, uh, we were working with uh, entrepreneurs across the state at my day job at the cabinet. Uh, we were coming up with programs to help entrepreneurs with their businesses. So I really absolutely love that part of it, getting to work with them and help them accomplish their dreams. Um, 10 years later, um, the president of Community Ventures called me and asked me if I was interested in coming back. They were starting a, a new loan program uh, and he asked me to run that program. 
Uh, so I've been back at Community Ventures now for going on eight years. Those first four years, I ran the loan program. And because of my success with uh, my artwork and, again, just some, some amazing blessings, uh, I was able to start Art, Inc., under the Community Ventures uh, banner. And I've been doing that now for about five years. And, and really the, the, uh, what started Art Inc. was what I wish had been available when I was starting my art career uh, in terms of the services and the assistance, uh, the guidance, uh, what should I be doing? What shouldn't I be doing? How to price my artwork, how to set up the LLC, the entire nine yards of, of what it means to be a, a creative entrepreneur. Uh, and that's the part that I really needed help with when I was starting up. So I really started Art Inc. based on what I wish was available as I was coming up and, and developing um, developing my artwork. Um, as we did that, we provided the educational opportunities uh, for the artist. Uh, we do classes, one-on-one um, -on -one workshops to help artists. But I also realized that um, artists need a, a practical place to put all of that education um, into practice. So uh, from there, I started uh, Art House Kentucky, which is a part of Art Inc. That's where we sell our artist work. It's a nonprofit retail art gallery near downtown Lexington. We've got about 53 Kentucky artists that we represent there, uh, but we give them an opportunity to sell their work uh, both in our brick and mortar location as well as in our um, on our online uh, uh, website. If you go to arthousekentucky.org. Throughout this entire process, I've been uh, an artist myself. So I've been really able and really blessed and really fortunate to be able to combine my two passions of my being an artist, uh, understand the trials and tribulations of being an artist, but also to help artists uh, navigate the, the business side of being an artist. So I don't teach them how to paint or how to do their craft or their, or their art, but I do help them from the business side, how to turn their art and their passion into a uh, hopefully into a successful and sustainable art career. So, um, you know, this has been the most, this has been the blessing of my life, the, the job that I'm doing right now. I couldn't have scripted it any better. Uh, if I had a white sheet of paper and, and could define exactly what I wanted to do, this is exactly what I want to be doing. So I'm, I've just been blessed that everything that has occurred in my career um, has led me to, to where I am right now. So thank you. Thanks to our panelists for sharing your journeys. I'm inspired and I hope our audience is also inspired. You come from many backgrounds. I think you're great examples of we all have lots of jobs and careers in us. And we just sometimes have no idea where that road's going to go. But by investing in ourselves and being open to change and a little hard work and reskilling, uh, we can certainly make a transition. Uh, let's see if we've had a question or so come in. <clears throat> we've had a question come in about any advice on researching or identifying prospective careers. Um, I'll take a stab and then if any panelists would want to add to that, I, I would certainly recommend career assessments. Um, also, just what are some of your interests? Which sections of the bookstore do you gravitate toward? What are your hobbies? What do you like to do on the weekends? Uh, are there any ways that you could pivot into those type industries? Um, Glenn, I think you also maybe wanted to add something to that for somebody who wants to change, but they're really just not even sure where to start. It can be overwhelming. Well, I mean, the us pivoting when we did the food truck, it's because of our love of making food um, and entertaining. So I was going to, you know, say the same thing. You know, what are your interests outside of work? You know, where where do you find joy, I guess, in that way? And what kind of, you know, research, what type of careers there are, you know, that interest you in, in that arena? And there are so many careers that are coming on the, um, on the radar every day. There are careers today that were not even in existence five years ago. So just looking around you, seeing what people are doing, studying on LinkedIn. What are some of the jobs that are coming up on LinkedIn? Good, good places to also start. Uh, Mark or Lindsay, would either of you like to add any additional advice for people as they're starting to consider a pivot? Thank you. 
Go ahead, Lindsay. Um, I, I really just started with Google. You know, I I started looking for places that were hiring in my area, in my region, and I would just I would read through like LinkedIn and other places, um, and just look at all the jobs out there because there were so many that I had never even heard of before. And so just just Google what you know who's hiring in in whatever um, town you live in or what region you live in, and look at the possibilities that are out there, and it may you know get your wheels turning as to other possibilities. Yeah, I would agree with I would agree with all of that, um, especially uh, you know kind of what gets you up in the morning. Um, I am extremely blessed that. You know, I don't feel like I've been working a job for the last, you know, 15, 15 years of my of my career uh, because uh, it has been something that has interested me so much. Uh, again, if I could, you know, script, uh, come up with a, um, uh, if I had a white sheet of paper and I could, you know, create my perfect job, this would be what I would be doing. So I can't emphasize enough, you know, find something that you are interested in. The, the thing I will add on to that, though, is if you can find something that you're interested in and then figure out uh, what is available out there and then try to uh, become a, a service to those that also might be interested in that same thing and maybe try to do it better or offer something that's not being offered out there already in that particular field. Uh, that way uh, you might have an opportunity uh, to, to go to a company and uh, provide that service or, or even start up something, you know, something, something yourself. Um, but I think it always starts with, and, and this is what I always tell my artists, it, it always has to be something that you, um, that you're interested in and something that's going to get you up out of bed every single day. Um, I don't have bad days anymore. Um, you know, I have my challenges with grant writing and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's, you know, that's part of it. But uh, every single day, it's, it's a blessing to be able to get up and, and work with and help and help people. So awesome. Couldn't have said a better panelist. Thank you very much for sharing your pivot journey. And thank you for joining us for today's kickoff webinar for Career Management Week. We hope you'll join us for other events this week. Um, do keep in mind our UK Alumni Career Services team are, help, are here to help you. It's a member benefit of joining the Alumni Association and anyone can join. Have a great day, everyone. And good luck in making those pivots and transitions. Just take baby steps to begin and if you, months or a few years, you, you too could be on a future pivot panel of successful alumni. Have a great day, everyone.